Next up, uh, we're going to have Fred Benenson, who's going to talk about Breadwinner. I also want to remind everyone to take the survey. Uh, I'll post it in the chat here in a second. Uh, the survey helps us basically figure out what OP or what Osh was going to do in the next couple of years. So it's really important you take it. And with that, I will turn it over to Fred Benenson. Hey there. Thanks for having me. Um, I have to say I've been in, on the edge of this community for I know it must be decades and I never thought I would be like in it in it. And so I'm really happy to be here. Um, thank you all so much for having me. I go way back with Alicia when I was uh, working for Creative Commons, um, which is kind of how I kind of opened my mind to this stuff. But um, I'm here to talk to you about Breadwinner, which is a hardware driven community I've been building over the last year. Um, but let me give you a little bit more about how I got here. I assume everyone can see my slides and that's all set. Um, let me know if you can't see my slides. Uh, okay. So uh, in 2005, I worked for Creative Commons um, and uh, would eventually work, I'd start as an intern and kind of got exposed to the um, open source community. I loved working on Wikipedia stuff. Um, and then I did grad school at NYU at ITP and then worked for Creative Commons after that. Um, in 2009, uh, I took a job at Kickstarter, um, and around that time, I had my first introduction to uh, what sourdough was. I, I got a class at Brooklyn Kitchen um, in uh, in New York, and they did a great job of explaining it. It kind of like blew my mind. Like, there's this little jar with this like yeast thing in it, and this bacteria, and you have to feed it every day, and it's got like a name, and it's got all these like individual characteristics. And I was just fascinated by that, and it stuck with me, and I, I started. Start trying to make sourdough at home, and it was like okay. And um, my job at Kickstarter kind of took off and took over my life, and I really didn't have any time for it. Uh, I left Kickstarter in 2016. Um, I took a job at Y Combinator, um, and I was doing data science work all along the way, um, and realized that uh, being on the investment side of things was probably not for me, and I wanted to get back to making things. Um, so I um, left. Y Combinator, I was like, I'm gonna spend some time doing what I wanna do. Um, and I was like, what do I have time for now that um, I, I don't have a full time job? And I was like, what's, I, I was thinking back and I was like, I like making bread. Like that was a thing that like took, a, it took enough time at home that like I haven't been able to do that. So I got back into it and that was around 2018. So ever since then, I've just been baking bread as a hobbyist, um, which is funny because that became a really big deal in 2020. And uh, it was just kind of a total coincidence. I had um, been inspired to start working on Breadwinner before the pandemic. Everyone always asked me that question. Uh, and then it became uh, quite an interesting uh, intersection of a reality and uh, interest and, and um, projects. So um, that's the rough timeline. Um, here's some photos of my bread. Um, I like to do a lot of traditional sourdough baking. Um, I'll explain what that means in a minute. Um, if anybody hasn't dabbled in the bread community online, I highly recommend doing it. It's an incredibly positive community. Um, I was just kind of floored at how nice and welcoming people were. Um, there's a lot to learn and people are really friendly. It's a really great thing. And I think um, the kind of visual medium that we're all kind of used to working with online now um, really lends itself to some really nice photography too. So, um, but let's get into sourdough. Uh, Sourdough was the way everyone ate bread up until like the early 20th century. And um, it's just called sourdough now because it's got this like kind of flavor connotation, but it's really just meant to distinguish from commercially produced bread that really became popular in the 20s and 30s. Um, before that, it was really hard to make bread in large batches. Um, it required uh, keeping a yeast culture alive. And this is actually um, some of our earliest um, evidence of um, baking in Egyptian culture is references to uh, culture, uh, like yeast culture, um, separate from human culture. Um, and uh, recently, some people have been able to resurrect um, uh, yeast actually from ancient Egypt, 4,500 years old, um, and reconstitute it and start baking with it. So um, most of human civilization eating bread over the last couple thousand years used a, a standard wild yeast um, starter. And that is a container of uh, 
uh, yeast and bacteria that live along side by, side by side in symbiosis with each other. You feed it once a day um, and it grows and then you put that into the dough and then it acts as the leavening device. Um, but the crucial part and the thing that people don't really understand about sourdough is that the bacteria that lives alongside of the yeast is um, contributing the flavor. The yeast does the leavening and it, and it has some flavor, but the, the main event for flavor is the bacteria and they live in a symbiotic relationship with the yeast. Um, I'm not going to get that into it, but it's, it's part of the kind of fermentation world. And uh, I, I really encourage you to check out a book called Never Home Alone. Um, there's a great chapter in there about sourdough um, and how ba good bacteria works in our lives. Um, why you should consider sourdough? I mean, I don't mean to pitch you hard on this, but it's way more fulfilling than buying bread. Your friends and family are gonna totally love it. It's really fun maintaining a starter because you can kind of see it changes and you start to learn a little bit about the biology. Um, and then like, again, your friends and family are gonna love it. It's a really fun thing. Um, now that we're all kind of getting out of the pandemic, bringing a loaf of fresh baked bread over to somebody's house, there's like nothing like it. Okay, so kind of explain the nature of a starter. Um, but one of the hardest parts as a sourdough baker when you're beginning to learn is like taming this thing. It's this like magic jar of fungal bacteria and our fungus and bacteria and it's kind of doing its thing. And it was really hard for me to kind of wrap my head around when it was good and when it was bad. Um, and it turns out other people have had this problem. There have been a number of kind of open source projects that um, have tackled tracking starters. And I think I saw this one on Reddit. Um, a year ago, there was also a computer vision one by someone named Justin Lamb, um, and then a, a, a Twilio engineer uh, named Christine uh, Sunu did a project uh, integrating Twilio's uh, GSM hardware into that. Um, and so these ideas have been kind of floating around in the sourdough community, and I was inspired by them. I was like, this is super cool. I wonder if I can build it. Um, but I was also realizing that there's probably a device here like that people would buy. I mean, the first comment on uh, on the reddit thread for this guy's uh lid is that somebody wants him to put it on uh on kickstarter uh yesterday and so i was like well i worked at kickstarter and uh, i kind of like making things i love bread and this is kind of a data project and i'm a data engineer and data scientist and like wow i should that, that'd be cool if i made one of these and i was like i could probably it'd be interesting to turn turn this into like a product and then your your yeast could have a website and your it could have a profile and and there would be this kind of opportunity to show off your starter because one of the big things in the sourdough community is people name their starters um and some people get really into kind of trying to identify their characteristics um and so all of these projects the open source ones um they just monitor the height of the starter after feeding and it takes about 12 to 24 hours to rise up and uh there's a number of ways you can do that ultrasonic sensor uh time of flight sensor um but that rise of your starter is uh, a pretty good proxy for how active it is and if it's not rising fast enough um then your bread isn't going to turn out any any good um and get lots more into that but if you're a sourdough baker paying attention to your starters rising and falling and the temperature it's at is really important so i started experimenting with the hardware uh, a good friend of mine star simpson was like fred you should just build this yourself um and so you know i busted out the arduino started hacking around on it built a little um, sensor here, started talking to my friends. Uh, I was in contact with um, a friend of mine named Sarah Pavis, who's a mechanical engineer. She seemed to totally understand the idea. Um, and she was a mechanical engineer for hire. So I was like, let's let's try building a prototype. So um, these are some of our first versions of it. Um, and we kind of always had an idea of like, okay, how are we gonna manufacture this thing? So that's where we're at now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I announced 50 units uh, for sale. Um, these are 3D printed prototypes with uh, feather wing boards inside them. Uh, they're working and they're tied to a breadwinner community website, which I've also been working on. Um, this is breadwinner right now. It's a website where you can scroll and look through other people baking. There's lots of people on there posting their bakes. Um, there's lots of detail about the bakes, the stuff, the kind of stuff that would never fit on Instagram um, and some really fun kind of discovery tools um, to find new recipes. You can see who's baking what. I had a lot of fun building this little um, JavaScript uh, interactive widget so you can understand baking uh, percentages, which is a which is a kind of a nuanced way of, of learning recipes in the in the baking world. Um, but here's the main event, which is the dashboard for your starter. This is real data from one of my starters um, coming from the lid. You can see it's a little noisy, um, but built some kind of interesting um, tooling and notification around it where it will send you an email or an SMS. Um, 
or a browser notification when your starter is ripe. Um, knowing that point is key for bakers. A lot of people want to know, okay, over the course of the day, when's the best time to bake with it? Uh, my eventual hope is that we could kind of control this thing through temperature. Uh, that's another story. Um, today, I'm open sourcing the code for the firmware. It's an ESP32. Um, it's under the GPL v3 license. Um, it's on breadwinner-life slash community-hardware on GitHub. Um, I can post the link in the chat uh, if you guys would like. Um, I'm also releasing the hardware uh, CAD design that Sarah worked on under Creative Commons share alike license. Um, this requires a little bit of work to get working, but like it's pretty close and you should be able to do it if you buy all this hardware. This is the bill of materials. Um, I'm just going to skip through it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Everyone's been using the VL6180 time of flight sensor, really standard temperature uh, thermometer. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. It's a stack that goes in the middle. Um, OK, so what is this? I am releasing this as kind of a thank you back to the community of people who inspired me on this. Um, and uh, I don't really know what's going to happen next. Um, I would love to hear what you think about the code. Um, it's kind of a cry for help. I haven't written firmware code in a really long time. Um, I think it works pretty well. It's pretty stable. I'm pretty proud of some, some parts of how it works. Um, and you can get some insight into kind of how I've been building uh, Breadwinner. Um, what this isn't, uh, good code that I'm proud of. It really just works. Um, if it were a different application, it would probably be um, a little bit cleaner. Um, it's not really going to be the production code. I don't know what that's going to look like. We're in early days. Um, it's not a real client for Breadwinner yet. Um, I, I, I would hope that you don't try writing to my API. Um, if you want to just get this working as a curiosity, it's, um, it's all on you. Um, and, but we can talk about that. Um, I would love it if people downloaded this and, um, I, I saw people using it. Um, sorry. Um, so. If you're inspired by this and you want to give it a shot and you have a 3D printer and you want to go buy those materials, uh, try it out. Let me know what you think. Or if you just want to go review some code and let me know what you think there. Um, I would, I'm would. i open to the idea that there would be a breadwinner community of uh, community-supported devices. There's some like nuance in terms of like um, how accurate that data is going to be. Um, the device that we're building right now, I actually have one right here. This is a recent one. Um, uh, I apologize for the black FDM filament plaster. Um, Sarah's run out of the white one. They're going to be white, but I'm calling this the Darth Vader edition. Um, I can show you a little bit of how it works. There's a middle part which kind of contains the electronics. Um, there's a little bit of a glass, a um, little bit of a uh, little bit of glass to protect the sensor. Um, it goes in there, slots in. Uh, there's a USB cord. We're not battery operated yet, um, but it's calibrated to a 16 ounce. Uh, ball mason jar. So um, all the math that it does to calculate the rise height and that kind of thing requires the kind of assumption that you're working with a wide mouth mason jar. If you were to build one of these yourself, I think it would probably be okay, uh, but it's a little bit open-ended and I just kind of want to see if people try that. Um, if you do, I can give you API access. Um, but for now, we're kind of like thinking about, okay, how do we manufacture this thing for real? Um, okay, so that's the kind of like main open source part. Um, like I said, if you try this at home, let me know. Uh, we can talk about API access. Um, I'd also kind of open to other suggestions about um, how the open hardware community might support this whole thing. Um, the really interesting part about Breadwinner is uh, what we're going to be able to do with the data. So there's lots of interesting questions you can answer about your own starter. Um, but when you have other people's starters, let's say dozens of them inside the system, which is what we're going to have in a couple of weeks, um, you can start to pay attention to trends. And you can start correlating, OK, this starter is rising faster than these other ones. Like, what's that person doing? And you know, we're going to make all the dashboards public and that kind of thing. Um, so we'll be able to see that. But as somebody who kind of looks at data in aggregate a lot. I'm really excited to see kind of the different performance characteristics against, about starters. And you can imagine correlating some of that stuff with your temperature or location. Um, having that aggregate data in one system from people who are sending that data from across the world is amazing. Um, OK, that's about it. I can kind of go through some of the data questions, but I just kind of wanted to inspire you guys. Uh, please reach out. Uh, Fred at breadwinner.life is my email. Uh, check us out on GitHub. Uh, find us on Twitter. 
And uh, hopefully we'll have a Kickstarter in a month or two where we're going to have a production version of this thing uh, ready to sell to bakers who don't care about open hardware, which is um, <laughs> going to be an interesting threshold. So thanks very much for listening. Uh, let me know if you get into baking. Um, it's been a pleasure.